here, Manitoba, Winnipeg, the St. Regis Hotel on Smith Street. 16-year-old Sunshine Wood was last seen on the evening of February 20th, 2004 at approximately 11.45 in front of the St. Regis Hotel. It has been over 15 years since she was last seen by friends and family. Police report that Sunshine's disappearance is an ongoing missing persons case being investigated as a homicide. While attending high school, Sunshine lived with family members and then a personal friend in downtown Winnipeg. A teenager spreading her wings who left a family and a community dealing with her devastating loss. Like many Indigenous youth, Sunshine left her community of Mantu Sipi Cree Nation to attend high school and was enrolled at Gordon Bell in the area of Broadway in Maryland. She had many friends and loved the social aspects of being in the city. The challenges of city living can be difficult for those from rural communities, even more so for a 16-year-old girl trying to fit in and further her education. Since her last whereabouts were recorded, just before midnight on February 20th, 2004, family and law enforcement have not been able to locate Sunshine or details of what happened to the young woman. At any time during this broadcast or afterward, if you have any information that might help solve the case of the disappearance of Sunshine Wood, visit our website. Someone out there has answers. Our goal is to find them. Where did Sunshine go after she left the St. Regis Hotel late that Friday evening? And who is she with? What happened to Sunshine Wood? Sunshine Wood was born and raised in Mantu Sipi Cree Nation, also known as God's River, a remote community in northern Manitoba. She grew up with two older brothers and two younger sisters. Sunshine's dad, Anthony Wood, remembers his daughter as a typical teenager. So she told me that uh, she was planning on uh, uh, graduating high school and uh, planning on being a, a nurse. That was her plan, but uh, the plans never came true after what happened. Sunshine Wood is one of thousands of Indigenous youth who move from rural communities to urban centres each year because of the educational imbalance between First Nations education on reserve and provincial standards. This can include lack of current resources like textbooks, libraries, and even safe, healthy structures in which to learn. In turn, putting them in vulnerable and sometimes fatal situations. Annie Ohana, Aboriginal department head at L.A. Matheson, and recipient of the Prime Minister's Award for Teaching Excellence, is well-versed regarding the decimation of Indigenous people. This isn't like a situational poverty where someone loses their job or someone gets sick. This was outright genocide. And the point was to deny people access to housing, access to education, access to healthcare, access to nutrition, like all the factors you want to list in the world, those were all legitimately restricted or denied at some point in just the last hundred years. It wasn't long after Sunshine moved to Winnipeg that her dad became aware that she was dealing with some challenges. She wanted to attend school. And, uh, she was staying with her uncle here in uh, in Winnipeg. At first, when she started attend attending school, she uh, she was doing good. But uh, as the months go went by, uh, she was uh, skipping classes and uh, and uh, she was doing. Uh, I guess uh, the way I heard uh, alcohol, she, uh, she got into alcohol and uh, with the wrong persons, the wrong uh, people she didn't know. While visiting Winnipeg in February 2004, Anthony would see his daughter Sunshine for the last time. The last time I spoke to her was uh, I went to a drop off uh, some money for her, where she was staying on Langside Street in uh, February 20, 2004. But later on in the evening, I saw her at the St. Regis Hotel. 
in the bar. That time when the St. Regis Hotel was open. The St. Regis Hotel is located on Smith Street in downtown Winnipeg. It closed its doors for business in 2017, and it has been over a decade since Sunshine Wood was last seen there. Video surveillance footage from the St. Regis shows Sunshine leaving the hotel just before midnight. Detective Dave McDonald with Project Devote provides details of Sunshine's disappearance. So on February 20th, 2004, uh, Sunshine Wood attended to the St. Regis Hotel in Winnipeg. Um, she went there to meet her father briefly. Um, while inside, she met with uh, some associates of hers. She stayed shortly to socialize for a while. Uh, she left the hotel at about 11.45 p.m. Uh, she went outside for a cigarette uh, with, on, her own on her own will with a group of associates of her that were known to her. And she went outside for a cigarette and she has yet to be seen or heard from since. At the time of her disappearance, police description indicates that she was five foot, six inches tall, with long black hair, wearing an Exco hoodie, blue jeans, and black boots. A couple of days after, uh, I was staying at my uh, late mom's place. This is when uh, Kate told me that uh, she didn't arrive home uh, that night, February 20, 2004. Realizing that Sunshine wasn't coming back, the family contacted the police. So as soon as the family was uh, made aware that she was in fact missing, uh, they reported it to the Winnipeg Police on February 26, 2004. Um, so at that time, Winnipeg Police entered into an investigation that was headed by the Missing Persons Unit. Um, and then in 2012, Project Devote uh, took over that investigation. As grief and disbelief settled in, Sunshine's family faced the horrible reality. Well, the first uh, five years, I really couldn't uh, think uh, I turned to alcohol and... Uh, but now today, I'm uh, alcohol-free, and I'm starting to realize that I may never see my, uh, my daughter again. Sunshine Wood was a vibrant young Indigenous woman who had goals of becoming a nurse, was loved by many, and whose disappearance has left a terrible void in her family. If you have any information about what happened to Sunshine Wood, visit our website. Sunshine Wood was a daughter, a sister, a niece, and a friend. She went missing on February 20th, 2004, after going outside for a cigarette with a group of people at the St. Regis Hotel on Smith Street in downtown Winnipeg. Sunshine was a member of Mantusipi Cree Nation, a 16-year-old student attending Gordon Bell High School when something went tragically wrong. From an early age, Sunshine and her siblings were raised by their dad. Well, the mother left at, uh, when she was about 10. They never bothered her mother after she left. Yeah, me, my dad, and my grandfather raised uh, our children, my children. As a child, Sunshine was a busy young girl who loved to play and spend time with her dad. She used to, uh, like, to play with dolls like any other girl would, <laughs> like, like to do. And uh, most of all, uh, she like us to go with her, to go fishing with her. Cleaning the fish, uh, like not filleting, but uh, cleaning the fish with water. and. Uh, that's what uh, she, she used to do to help us out. Sunshine was very close with her entire family, and her older brothers treasured her. They would uh, play with her when she was a baby. They liked her. The older brothers, yeah, they were protective. Before Sunshine disappeared from Winnipeg, she made an effort to stay in touch with her dad 
who started to notice a change in her. She always phoned uh, every day. And uh, we talked about uh, how, what she was doing and how she's doing here in Winnipeg. Like, uh, she wants to come home. With, and she says she doesn't want to come home to back to God's River. And uh, I tried to, uh, one time I tried to take her home because she was uh, drinking a lot. But uh, she wanted to stay. Uh, I didn't really get worried uh, when she first uh, got here. But when I heard that she was uh, drinking, that's when I started getting worried about her. For many Indigenous people, leaving the community is a social and economic necessity. And for young people like Sunshine Wood, leaving the protective surrounding of family and community often puts them in vulnerable situations. As a police officer, we are often the first contact with people in, in cases such as this because they maybe are struggling with, with a move or a change in lifestyle as, as large as this one was. Um, so we often see people at times where they might be desperate or, or in need of some support. After Sunshine's disappearance, Christy Dukowitz, director of the Child Safety Family Advocacy Division of the Canadian Centre for Child Protection, was quickly connected to Sunshine's family. Our relationship with uh, the Wood family started right from the get-go. They were a family who was in the city uh, searching for their daughter. This was not their home, um, which adds, you know, another whole layer of fear and worry. Our agency became somewhat of a home base for them where we were able to help this family navigate all those things that nobody ever anticipates having to deal with, you know. Um, they were really relying on the media to get the information out about uh, their daughter. Um, and so they needed a lot of support in how how do you do that? You know, here's a family that's coming from small rural Manitoba and is now in the city dealing with really serious things and really scary times. So uh, we were there to walk alongside them and work with police in hopes of getting answers very quickly. Despite the attention to Sunshine's disappearance, she hasn't been found and there are many challenges that come into play when dealing with historical cases. So obviously people's memories fade over time. Um, that's a hurdle that we come across quite often. So as an investigator, it's, it's our job to try to extract as much detail as possible from a witness or anyone that may have information which would be important to us. Uh, often people have that buried in the back of their mind, so it's up to us to extract all that detail because you never know which one, which detail may be important. As each year passes, the loss of Sunshine weighs heavy on the family. Sadly, after Sunshine's disappearance, her two older brothers passed away. Well, mostly uh, Christmas, uh, just me and my two daughters, my granddaughters and uh, my dad. <laughs> we talk about that and uh, the sense I lost. My daughters would say, I wonder how would life be if they were still alive. <laughs> Unfamiliar with the dangers of city life, Teenager Sunshine Wood from God's River First Nation fell victim to a crime. Her disappearance and murder investigation is still active. If you have any information, please visit our website. Sunshine Wood disappeared on February 20th, 2004 from outside the St. Regis Hotel located on Smith Street in downtown Winnipeg. That evening, just before midnight, a surveillance camera showed Sunshine leaving the establishment. It has been over 15 years with no communication between this young high school student and her friends and family. Sunshine had a dream that she wanted to accomplish by moving to Winnipeg and attending high school, but her dad, Anthony, felt that circumstances she faced were too hard for her to overcome. Once she got into Winnipeg to attend high school, she got into a... She was skipping a lot of classes. To me personally, uh, I don't think she would... Uh, 
half graduated from uh, high school and uh, to pursue her uh, plan as a nurse, I don't think it will, it wouldn't have worked out. She was a teenager expressing her independence. And although her dad tried to persuade her to come home, she had made up her mind. I went to her uh, where she was staying with a friend. I went, I went there and talked to her and uh, she didn't seem like uh, she wanted to uh, listen to me, but that's uh, how she was. Uh, she didn't listen, now she, she grew older. Over the years, Christy Dukowitz's involvement in Sunshine's case has brought her closer to getting to know Sunshine's outgoing personality. I've heard much about her laugh over the years. And when you see her picture, and that's the, the, the picture that we use often, that smile is um, absolutely, um, everybody's drawn to it. And it sounds like she had that larger in life personality for sure. Uh, it was a lot of fun, uh, high energy. And you know, it's one of the things that it, it's sort of tragic in the work that we do is we often see kids um, who have these amazing personalities who might be more risk-taking, who might be a little bit more bold, um, face trouble that they shouldn't have to face. I often say we, we tend to lose kids over the years who would turn out to be the most fascinating adults. Detective David McDonald of Project Devote hopes that the answers can be found for her family. Her family has been dealing with this for 15 years, day in and day out. Um, as a father, I have children. I couldn't imagine what it's like. I have nieces, nephews, what it's like to have a loved one to go missing from my life. Um, so that's something that they deal with day in and day out, and they don't have any answers right now. So at the end of the day, our goal is to bring Sunshine home and to give uh, their family some answers. Although many challenges still exist for young Indigenous people moving into urban settings from their communities, Annie Ohana has seen positive changes evolving through multi-organization programming. The results are amazing because we have youth that come from marginalized backgrounds that usually are told they're not going to graduate, right? Or, or, you know, they're lucky if they graduate, where opportunities can be really rough, where poverty is a major factor in their lives. And we see them moving forward. We see them gaining opportunities in the most incredible ways to become leaders in their community at very young ages. So to me, it's about finding that connection between like the public school system, the community, marginalized communities, and then bring that all together to really form kind of a, almost like a, a safety net where kids feel comfortable to explore and grow. While advocates work diligently to ensure future generations have opportunities, safety and the right to thrive. Those who love Sunshine are still suffering, but surviving. On her family and her whole community, it's been devastating. I mean, the Wood family's faced, you know, quite a bit of tragedy in their life, more than their share. Um, but you know what, they have a, a, a phenomenal resilience too. I mean, Anthony has traveled to, to Toronto and just beat the streets on his own, walking, trying to follow up on tips, um, information that comes in. Anthony also met with then Prime Minister Stephen Harper to speak about Sunshine. But it was also great to witness him be able to sit with the leader of our country and to talk about his daughter. He held a picture of Sunshine and he, the Prime Minister listened to him talk about his daughter. And the Prime Minister shared his own personal experience with a missing person in his extended family. And I think it was an important moment for him, for him to realize we all see her as very, very important. She's a very important person. She is not just his daughter. She was a 16-year-old girl at the time um, that's a part of our Canadian community that needs to be found. Police urge anyone with information to come forward. Contact police uh, if you feel your information is, is pertinent to the investigation. We always say people don't know what we know. So any small details, maybe as small as you may think it is, we always want to know everything. So Project Devote has a tip line. It's one 673 3316 uh, That tip line is monitored 24 hours a day. Um, you can also call Crime Stoppers or just contact your local police service uh, with any information. I'm trying to find her and uh, I haven't quit. Maybe somebody knows something and uh, he or she or they will uh, probably see me and uh, probably a uh, phone the uh, project evo that's working on the on the case and uh, 
just to come forward and uh, tell us what information they have on Sunshine. Anthony Wood hopes one day he'll get the phone call he's been waiting for. Sunshine, if you see me, phone, phone me at work at the pan office and uh, let us know that you're safe and uh, please come home. If you have any information that might help solve the case of the disappearance of Sunshine Wood, visit our website.